The following program is the work of broadcast students from the British Columbia Institute of Technology. BCIT Magazine features news stories from around the Lower Mainland which were produced over the past week. Responsibility for the content of the show rests completely with the students and their instructors. Today on BCIT Magazine, BCIT will add a fee to credit card transactions. Adrian Dix heats things up with just a month to go before the provincial election. And Burnaby bus riders take a hike. Hello and welcome to BCIT Magazine, I'm Angela Jung. And I'm Nicole Reinert. BCIT students find out their tuition could increase, but only if they pay by credit card. Matthew Hunt explains. Students in BCIT looking forward to their next semester are going to have to put away a little more cash if they plan to pay tuition and other fees by a credit card something that most students here don't agree with. BCIT is probably considered a more affordable school relative to some of the other um, post-secondary institutions and I think that they should maintain that image um, and be considered a more affordable school. Um, honestly I'm really shocked about this. Um, I paid by credit card last semester and I'm gonna have to pay again two semesters in the future and um, like I don't have that kind of money sitting in my bank account. I don't know how many students do. To illustrate the problem from the student's point of view, assume a student pays a $3,000 tuition with his credit card and charged the associated 2%. That works out to $60 per term, so with many other financial worries, it's no wonder they're upset. But the school insists it's to everyone's benefit. One of the things BCIT wanted to look at was how much was being spent in credit card fees, and that amount was significant. Last year, about $1.5 million. That's now money that can be put back into the budget and can be used for educational purposes. Now, despite the addition of these fees, students still have access to all the online banking features that they did before. In fact, there are no changes at all to paying directly online through their bank. Yeah, I think online banking will be very popular. There are actually seven different methods that BCIT students and staff can pay tuition or fees. Uh, they include uh, online banking, bank drafts, check, cash, in person of course, debit card. So there are many different options uh, that students and staff can still take advantage of. They can still be pay by credit card, but they will pay that associated fee. For BCIT Magazine on the campus of BCIT Burnaby, I'm Matthew Hunt. With Election Day nearing in British Columbia, the NDP's Adrian Dix wanted to win over voters with a big announcement. But as Matthew Lowe discovers, things didn't go quite as planned. The NDP's announcement Tuesday was supposed to be all about their support for BC's film industry. But like any good film, a twist of events took this announcement off the rails. So today I'm happy to announce that an NDP government will increase the labour tax credit to 40% for foreign-based... And domestic production. The NDP's platform was well received by BC's film industry, but the focus of the press conference was soon turned elsewhere. Adrian, Adrian uh, Christy of... Clark has just challenged you to a one-on-one -on -one, uh, town hall debate. What's your reaction to that? And I think to try and exclude um, the Conservative Party and Green Party, who are also competing with me for votes, um, is, is just wrong. After that, Dix did his best to get things back on track. We wanted to focus on this issue today. It sends a strong message, uh, this announcement, uh, to uh, the domestic and international industries that BC uh, intends uh, to be a major centre for years to come. However, no matter what he said, the question of a debate would always resurface. We're do just fine. Mr. Dix, just to clarify, back on uh, the Premier's offer of a one-on-one -on -one debate, are you then uh, declining that offer? Well, it's, the, it's, it's not an offer for the Premier to make her offer to exclude the Green and Conservative parties from participating in debate. Uh, that's not uh, the Premier's offer to make. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, I think that uh, they have to be uh, brought into the process as well. So you're in with conditions then, that's what I'm saying. I am not going to exclude 
hundreds of thousands of British Columbians and their voices for self-interested reasons. And if other people think that's a way to get votes, I leave them, that to them. Thank you. With just over a month remaining before British Columbians head to the polls, it appears there are still a few more twists to come in this election's plot. Matthew Lowe in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. And it looks like it'll just be Premier Christy Clark on Sunday's television special. She's going to need to pull out all the stops if she wants to win the May 14th election. Because a recent Angus Reid poll revealed which Premier had the greatest approval rating. And if you are wondering where our Premier stood, well you're going to have to look all the way down the list to the very bottom. Because Clark is tied for dead last with Newfoundland's Premier. Some businesses in a growing South Burnaby area are having a tough time hiring and keeping employees. They say poor bus service is to blame. Camille McDonald investigates. When Randall Chamberlain gets off work, he has a hike ahead of him. He works at Alpha Technologies in Burnaby's Big Bend Industrial Park, where the closest bus stop is a kilometre away. Chamberlain is one of many workers who rely on transit and make this trudge to and from the bus stop. Okay. Some Alpha employees do drive to work, but it's not an option that everyone can afford. So they're left with the existing bus service, where they either have to walk through an empty lot to get there, or take their chances walking along this very busy stretch of road. It's a bit scary at times. Safety is the real issue for these workers and their employer. Especially during the winter months when it's dark and dreary, uh, it can be quite a safety hazard for them as well. They're walking in the street because there's not sidewalk along the whole path. Last week, Alpha and other Big Bend businesses had a meeting with TransLink, which promised to extend the bus route, something Borovich said they've been promising for a decade. We're a little bit from Missouri in terms of believing their commitment. I'm optimistic that will happen, but until it's here, we're just kind of holding our breath. TransLink had this to say. We're just finishing up service optimization for 2013, and so the 116 bus route would be considered as part of the process for potential service optimization reinvestment for 2014. So at least for the next year, Chamberlain and his co-workers will continue their daily hike. Walk half an hour a day, that's all the exercise you need. <laughs> Camille McDonald in Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. Coming up next on BCIT Magazine, a former Dragon's Den contestant is making a comeback. And a dance from the 1600s is given new life in Vancouver. Standby graphics, ready camera one. If you want to experience the fast-paced world of news. Today on BCIT Magazine. Striking. Make magic on a movie set. Frame. And action. Or bring your creative ideas to life. BCIT's hands-on training will get you started. BCIT Television and Video Production. Your possibilities start here. Welcome back to BCIT Magazine. Dragon's Den is a popular Canadian television show where entrepreneurs can go and pitch their ideas in hopes of getting financial backing. A local businesswoman went on the show two years ago but failed to impress the judges. But as my co-anchor Angela Jung discovers, that rejection didn't stop her. Hi ladies. What can I get for you? Two teas and now we'll have the ginger and whatever The ginger it is. licorice. Oh. You may recognize Mahan Kolsa from Canada's reality TV show, Dragon's Den. My purpose is to feed people. Um, I've been eating, living, and breathing live foods and yoga for the last 10 years. Wow, wow very that's a beautiful. feast. Beautiful. Too early for an investment, I'm out. Although none of the dragons invested in her product, she was not discouraged. So I wasn't necessarily going there to make a deal with the dragons as much as I knew that when my time came the right person would find me and meet me and match me and that we would do our work together. Yeah, so I've just found some savory crackers so, you know, oh yeah, good, you're on the granola. Super. And that's exactly what happened. She stuck with her vegan roots and expanded the organic snack line. Less than a month ago, she opened this eatery. 
it's all fresh foods and uh, we're working with local farmers and we're really just doing our best to maintain a high level of quality and integrity with every single one of our offerings. Robert McCandless is a longtime herbalist and says more people need to embrace this type of diet. It's, it's very, very clearly uh, shown that the more you eat vegan, the longer you're going to live. And the more you eat uh, processed foods and meat and dairy products, the more likely you are to die of heart disease, diabetes, cancer, obesity, or autoimmune diseases. Kalsa says her primary goal isn't to convert customers into vegans or raw food consumers, but to open their palates to something new. It's really just giving people an opportunity to say, wow, I didn't realize it could taste so good. Although she couldn't make a deal with the dragons, her perseverance led her to this new venture. Angela Jung in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. Dancing is an art form for some people and for others, it's a fun way to exercise. But as my co-anchor Nicole Reinhardt finds out, certain types of dance, like English country dance, can also provide a lesson in history. For $12 or whatever they can give, Vancouverites can step back in time and dance the way Jane Austen's characters would have danced. What we offer is something that is very rare in modern society. We offer a total sort of social experience that's completely supported, uh, working with live music, um, with uh, echoes of, of a gracious historical time, and romance, a lot of romance. Dancing served an important purpose during Austin's time period. The only time a young person of marriageable age, particularly the women, it's the women you, you had to keep your eye on, uh, the only time they were allowed unchaperoned time is within a dance. Longtime dancer Ken McKenzie agrees that a lot can be communicated through dancing. The other thing is it's very flirty, you know, and you can, you can sort of do various things. It's, a lot of it is eye contact. This dance form uh, started in the 1600s, uh, went through to the 1800s, and it was basically destroyed by the waltz and the polka. But thanks to Harmon, it's getting a second life in Vancouver. She co-founded English Country Dance Vancouver over 15 years ago after she and her husband were unable to find an existing group in the Lower Mainland. First-timer Donna Smith is enjoying herself. I've made lots of mistakes today. But people, usually there's other people who've been here a lot and they whisper to you what to do or they grab you and pull you in the right direction. So, yeah, <laughs> it's fun. The group meets every few weeks at the Legion Hall in Kitsilano and encourages newcomers. Nicole Reiner in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. Here's a look at what's trending. Take a look at number 22. This pint-sized player is an honorary Nebraska Huskers. What this video won't show you is that the seven-year-old hero making the touchdown is battling brain cancer. Wow, what a moment. And both benches. Want to see how animals eat their food? Our next video got over one and a half million hits in a day. And finally, Know What's Trending segment would be complete without a prank. I take it you like the video. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, uh, if you have any questions or comments regarding this program, please visit us online at bcit-broadcast.com or bcitbroadcastnews.ca. That's BCIT Magazine for this week. I'm Nicole Reinert. And I'm Angela Jung. We leave you now with a look at more English country dancing. <laughs>